Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so today we are going to be, uh, it's our first class. The agenda for the class today is that I'm going to um, introduce you the, to the module, uh, show you the ex exactly what to expect. And then I'll also share the schedule with you today as well. And then after that, I will also um, show you exactly how to access your material uh, uh, via our website as well. Because once you're registered with us, you will be able to access the, uh, the soft copy of the textbook. You'll be able to access the videos of what we did last year. And you'll also be able to access, um, um, uh, during the revision period, you'll be able to access the, uh, the, uh, the material as well. So when it comes to uh, uh, your curriculum, your curriculum uh, is going to be having about uh, 19 study units. So your curriculum has about 19 uh, study units. Now, when you look at these study units, um, some of the study units, they are basically going hand in hand with what you see in the textbook. And then some of the text, there are three study units, which basically refers you to, um, to the material that is given as additional material or additional reading as well. So which means you need to make sure that it's not that the, 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 the sequencing of uh, the material in the, in the textbook is going to be the same as the sequencing of the material that you're going to be finding when, you, when you're going through the curriculum as well. So when it comes to the curriculum, you will see that um, what we do is that we assist you to go through the study units and uh, we assist you with uh, assignments and we also assist you with uh, uh, revision as well. So you will see that um, during the period that we're going to be going through the curriculum, it's not that we're going to be having a class every week. So what we do is that we uh, we we um, we give you uh, videos. We uh, give, I'll, I'll indicate to you exactly which uh, videos we are supposed to be covering. You go over those videos. Then after a given period of time, we're going to be having a class that we're going to be scheduling where we review those chapters. Then after reviewing those chapters, we practice questions as well where we go through those practice questions so that we start preparing you for the exam then after so usually what we do is that when you cover half the curriculum that's when we're going to be having uh, another another class then after you uh, we have another class you cover the second half of the curriculum as well then we have another class again to review the second half of the curriculum then what we also do is that uh, we are also going to be having uh, assignments and we're going to be setting aside classes where we're going to be going through assignment one and assignment two as well. I think uh, when I share with you the timetable that we're going to be having, I think our first class for assignment one, we're going to be having it uh, this month in April. Because remember, I think your assignment is due sometime in May. So we're going to be having that uh, first class for assignment sometime in April. So when you look at your curriculum, you see that so um, study unit uh, topic one of, of your curriculum uh, looks at um, so topic one of your curriculum. It looks at um, uh, the international finance environment. And if you look at this particular topic, you are basically being introduced to international finance because um, from my understanding, when you're doing your undergrad, you are when you if you study financial management, you are concentrating more on the domestic uh, side of what our uh, finance as well. You're basically looking at a, a company that you're going to be analyzing as well. But when you analyze this particular company, you're basically analyzing a company that is uh, um, assumed to be uh, domestically, having its operations domestically as well. So which means now when it comes to international finance, this is where you're now going to be saying that a company can either be trading uh, internationally or it can be having subsidiaries internationally as well or it can be having maybe it's a part ownership in a particular venture as well internationally and you need to find out exactly so how do we account for uh, these operations as well from a finance perspective so for topic one we look at the international finance environment and here the lecturer says uh, when you look at the aim of the topic they say that this topic focuses on the context within which the financial managers of multinational corporations make their decisions so the discussion focuses on key terminology instruments, institutions that are central to such decision making. So which means when you look at the first topic, the first topic is basically uh, the first, normally it's the first five chapters of the textbook. 
It's it's the first five chapters of the uh, textbook where the, at the first chapter we're going to be looking at the overview of multinational financial environment, international flow of funds and balance of payments, international financial markets, exchange determination, and currency derivative as well. And you will see that when you look at these particular topics as well, please note that when you look at international flow of funds, the balance of payment part. Just take note of it, but don't worry much about it. Uh, because you see that in your textbook, they will give you a, a statement of comprehensive income. Uh, sorry, they will give you a particular balance of payment uh, statement as well for the country as well. Don't really worry much about that particular balance of payment. Reason being, you are concentrating more on a company operation than what? Um, uh, yeah, um, than uh, looking at finance from a what? From a um macroeconomic perspective we are more concerned with the microeconomic perspective where you are concentrating more on the company operations so you see that the first five study units looks at that so for unit one remember we said that for unit one this is where you look at the overview of multinational financial environment and in this particular unit please take note that it's going to be covering chapter one of the textbook and you will see that the soft copy of the textbook that I've shared with you, the things that I've highlighted there, they are based on the learning outcomes of those particular chapters. So which means that based on the learning outcomes of those particular chapters, that's how we basically cover the material that is covered you know, in study unit one. Then uh, study unit two, remember it says, we say that this looks at the international flow of funds and the outcome, the things that we have covered there, that are highlighted in the particular in the textbook, they are basically based on what the lesson outcome, which is basically going to be uh, the second chapter of the textbook. Then start unit three, it's the, basically the same thing as well. It's chapter three of the textbook. Then start unit four, it's also uh, the same thing we, where we look at exchange rate determination and it's chapter four of the textbook. And then start unit five, uh, it's more or less the uh, same thing as well because it's chapter five of the textbook. Then from there, we move on to uh, study unit six, and study unit six looks at the exchange rate history and the role of government. When you look at the exchange rate history part, don't really spend too much time on it. That's why you see that when you look at the soft copy of the textbook that we are, 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 are going to be able to access as well, we don't really look much into the exchange rate history. We concentrate more on the role of government, and usually, in this particular chapter, well, it's a lot, it's quite a bit of uh, theory that you're going to be looking at as well. Then uh, start unit seven, you see that you start, you start unit seven, you are, um, looking at the international arbitrage and interest rate parity. And this particular topic, it's a highly examinable topic. I've seen this, this question, uh, questions coming from international arbitrage and the interest rate parity so many times before. So please take note of this particular chapter. It's a highly examinable topic. Uh, so it's a very, very highly examinable topic. And they say it's coming from chapter seven of uh, the textbook. Then start unit eight looks at the relationship among, among inflation, interest rates, and exchange rates. And remember, this is now linking chapters, um, what you've learned from chapters five, six, and seven. So it's basically linking those three chapters where you were, whatever you've covered in chapters five, six, and seven, you're also now going to look at it as well at a higher level. So that's basically what you're going to be looking at in chapter eight. Then uh, in chapter nine, you look at forecasting exchange rates. And when you look at forecasting exchange rates as well, it's very much linked to chapter eight but now you're going to be looking at focusing exchange the way you are now going to be preparing yourself to look at what capital budgeting as well because you're going to be using focusing of exchange when you're looking at what capital budgeting then uh chapter nine, chapter 10 of uh, study unit 10 study unit 10 is going to be coming from chapter 10 of uh, your textbook and it looks at measuring exposure to exchange rate fluctuation so when you look at measuring exposure to exchange rate fluctuations there, you will see that your exposure is going to be transaction exposure, economic exposure, and translation exposure. So you see that chapter 10 is basically an, interrupt, an introduction to start unit 
11 and 12. So, so study unit 10 is an introduction to study unit 11 and 12. And so which means that these three study units are very much linked. So when you look at even the overview of this particular study unit there, that's why you see that study unit 11, you look at managing transaction exposure, which is basically one of the exposures that are stated in study unit 10, which is basically looked at what is an introduction as well. Then study unit 12, you look at um managing the other two exposures, which is basically uh managing economic exposure and translation exposure, which is basically what was introduced in study unit 10. So you see that study unit 10 is very much linked to study unit 11 and study unit 12 as well. Then from there, if you check, you will see that um, when you move on to study unit 13, study unit 13 looks at um uh study unit 13 looks at multinational capital budgeting and the point of interest there when you look at study unit 13 is that this is where they are not going to be referring to the textbook to go over make sure that you take note that you need to download three additional readings additional reading one additional reading two and additional reading three so which means in this case, study unit 13 is going to be uh, relevant for additional reading to where you look at what multinational capital budgeting. And usually when you look at multinational capital budgeting, it basically means that whatever you have learned when you were looking at study unit um, uh, nine is also going to be relevant because it's very much linked to what you've studied in study unit 10, 11, 12 as well. So which means that you are also, there is some relevance on you know, what you would have covered in study unit nine, and then some relevance on what we have covered in study unit uh, 10, 11, uh, and 12 as well. So which means that you are now going to be looking at multinational capital budgeting. Remember the capital budgeting techniques that are going to be concentrating more on is the, uh, is the, um, is the net present value. So that's the capital budgeting technique that you're going to be concentrating on. But now when you look at the net present value analysis, the difference now from the uh, domestic or purely domestic com uh, com uh, company is mainly because there's going to be an element of what? Exchange rate. So because the next, there's an ex element of the exchange rate, it basically means that you now need to check to see exactly. So there are two elements that are going to be contributing towards what? The return of a particular investment. It's going to be uh, the return from where it's going to be operating and also the movements in exchange, which can be favorable or unfavorable as well. So which means study unit 13, please take note that it's going to be uh, uh, re re uh, additional reading tool that you need to be having available as well. Then moving on to study unit 14, study unit 14 looks at multinational restructuring. Now, when you look at multinational restructuring, it, uh, the additional reading that is relevant today is additional reading three. Now, when you look at multinational restructuring, this is where we are now going to be saying that we need to acknowledge that the movements in exchange rate can over time can end up being what favorable or unfavorable. So, if the movements in exchange rate, uh, uh, if you're expecting that the movements in exchange rate are either going to be favorable or unfavorable, it basically means that you need to structure your you can you need to structure either your investment or you need to restructure your, your financing as well. Because remember, if you are expecting that you, you, the movement in exchange is going to end, end up increasing your costs of borrowing, so rather repay that debt and then borrow from somewhere else where you know that you're not going to be having uh, more obligations as well. So that's basically what you're looking at when you're looking at what multinational restructuring. So it's basically looking at the, now the relationship between the uh, operations of the business and the financing of the business and exactly how it links now with the uh, movements in exchange rate. So please take note that for additional reading 14, what is relevant there, uh, for, for study unit 14, what is relevant there is additional reading 3. Then moving on to study unit 15, study unit 4, uh, uh, 15, what is relevant there is chapter 14 of the textbook. But please take note that they are not everyone is going to be having the new version. Uh, some of them are going to people, some people are going to be having the older version of the textbook as well, especially the soft copies. So what you have to make sure that you take note of is that the material is the same, but what is different now is the 
a sequencing of the some of the chapters, especially when you now start looking at chapters 10 moving on as well. So which basically means that when you're now moving, especially when you're now moving from start unit 10 going onwards, please just make sure that you check the heading of your text or in your textbook as well. Make sure that the heading of the topic that the of the uh chapter that you're supposed to be covering there is the same as the heading of the what study unit you're supposed to be covering as well. So start unit 15 looks at uh, country risk analysis. So this is basically where you're now going to be analyzing to say, so how much is the um, uh, risk in the country that I'm going to be uh, in, uh, in considering investing in as well? So which means now when you're looking at um, looking at the risk that you're considering in the country that you're going to uh, consider investing in, you need to take into account political risk, then you need to take into account financial risks as well. So which basically means that the political risk and the financial risks are going to be giving uh, variables that are going to be contributing towards what? The overall risk. And they're also going to be having, these variables are also going to be having what? Weight that are going to be given as well. Then depending on the overall risk that you're going to be now calculating when it comes to the country risk, that's when you're now going to be deciding to say, should we invest in this project? Like, uh, should we consider this country as a good investment or should we rather not consider this country as a good investment as well. So because of that, it basically means that um, when you give this, do this particular calculation, please check not to see, to check clearly to say, what is the question saying when it comes to the country risk rating? So the, and also what does the board of directors of that country, company are saying regarding the uh, their risk appetite? Well, some, some questions they'll tell you that if the country risk rating is above a certain number, do not invest. Because remember, whatever, after you do the calculation, you need to come up with a conclusion as well. So we need to make sure that whenever they say, whenever a certain country risk rating is above a certain number, do not invest. It means that you're not going to say, do not invest if it's what is with above, right? But then some company, kind companies as well, because they have an aggressive risk taking policy as well, they might also tell you, you might see on the question where they say, if the country risk rating is uh, above a certain amount, that's when you can what decide to invest as well. So please check to see exactly what is the question saying regarding the acceptable country risk rating. So please take note that it's this is coming from chapter 14 of the new textbook. So this is coming from chapter 14 of uh, the new textbook. Then study unit 16 looks at multinational cost of capital. Uh, cost of capital and capital structure. So this is basically coming from uh, additional uh, reading one. So this is where they're now going to be looking at what additional reading one. And in this case, this is where you're now acknowledging that the cost of capital will need to be adjusted as well to, to take into account what international investing is as well. So which means that from a, for a pure domestic company, the relevant discount that is going to be the capital asset pricing model is the expected cost of capital or the uh, cost of equity as well, right? But now, when it comes to um, when it comes to international investment, your uh, capital asset pricing model becomes what the international capital asset pricing model, which means that you now need to make sure that you adjust the um, the uh, discount rate there for what for uh for uh, exchange at risk as well. So which means that this is where you're not going to be making those adjustments. And please take note that, remember we say that this is coming from additional reading one. So please make sure that start unit 16 will refer to additional reading one. Then start unit 17 looks at long-term uh, financing. And when you look at long-term financing, they refer us to chapter 15 of the textbook. So they refer us to chapter 15 of the textbook. And this is where they're now going to be making that assessment to say, should we consider long-term financing as a source of capital? And also you need to take into account to see exactly, so how do you now, now go about making those what uh, financing decisions as well? So which means that um, please make sure that you go over that when it comes to what we're going to be going through in chapter 15. Remember, I'm not going through this in detail, mainly because the deeper explanations of exactly what is going to be covered in each study unit. When you go over the video, I always make sure that I also explain in detail exactly how is it relevant 
when it comes to the study units and how is it relevant when it comes to uh, when you are now going to go through what in the textbook as well. Then study unit 18 looks at financing international trade. And uh, when you look at financing international trade, you are looking at payment methods for international trade, uh, trade finance method, and also government agencies for international trade as well. And you see that the government agencies for international trade, you don't really need to worry much about it, but the other two, that's basically what you're going to be are going through as well. Remember we said that this is coming from uh, chapter 17 of your textbook. So it's a bit of mixture of a bit of calculations and a bit of theory as well. So please make sure that you take note of that when you're looking at study unit 18. The study unit 19, which is the last study unit, looks at short-term financing. And when you look at short-term financing, this is coming from chapter 18 of the new textbook. So which means in this case, you're going to be looking at the sources of short-term financing, why multinational companies uh, corporations consider foreign financing and determine the effective financing rate. Uh, criteria considered for foreign financing and financing with portfolios of currencies. And the most common uh, question that you find from chapter chapter unit eighteen is where you look at determining the effective financing rate. Because remember, we said when you're now looking at at a company that is going to be having uh operations in foreign countries as well foreign economies as well right there's an element that you now have to take into account which is what the issue of the exchange rate so which means now when you look at um effective financing rate you are basically saying that now if you are going to be considering borrowing money you are going to consider to say so should we borrow money locally or should we uh borrow this money in uh in one country maybe let's say for example they can say if you are considering borrowing money in South Africa, or you can borrow uh, some of this money in um, in Botswana and borrow some of this money in Nigeria as well. Then you now need to find out exactly, instead of borrowing, the, you're now going to be comp compared to say, if I borrow the full amount that I need now uh, in South Africa, or borrow part of the money in Botswana and borrow part of the money in Nigeria as well. So how, we, how much is the effective financing rate for me when if I'm going to be Borrowing that money domestically or borrowing that money what in these two? If you are going to borrow that money in these two, these two countries as well, what is going to be the effective financing rate? Take into account my estimation of exactly how much is the interest that I'm going to be paying in each one of these countries and how much is the overall effect of, when it comes to the movements in exchange rate. Say, so how is it going to be compared to my currency? Am, am I expecting their currencies to appreciate against my currency? Or am I expecting their currencies what? to depreciate against what? my currency as well? And that will also contribute to us, what? the effective financing rate. Because remember, the effective financing rate is going to be determined by two things. The interest rate from where you're going to be borrowing and the uh, uh, appreciation uh, the percentage appreciation or depreciation from the currencies that I'm going to be considering borrowing from as well. So that's basically how you're going to be making that decision. And remember, this I've seen this particular question so many times before when it comes to past papers and also past assignments as well. So it's a very, very important study unit. I've seen it coming in so many times when it comes to past question papers and past assignments as well. So are there any questions so far? Before we look at our timetable uh, and our schedule for fifty four eight zero two, any questions? Uh, yes, Renan. Um, do you have uh, old uh, exam papers? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have old exam papers, but what we usually do is um, between now until the end of October. Uh, that's when we are going to be concentrating on um uh, uh on um on um what is that going through the study units. Then after the end of October, that's when we're going to be looking at what past exam papers and also past assignments as well. So you will see that when it comes to the old exam papers on our database, we have old exam papers. Starting from 2016 all the way to 2024, because I already have the 20, the January 2024 paper, I already have it as well. So, which means that's basically how big our database is as well. And you will be, and uh, you will see that I think from 2017, we do have videos 
uh, going through that. And you already have the, uh, the memos to these past question papers as well. Uh, we also have them as well. And remember, on our database, we also have past question papers and also past assignment memos as well. Uh, is the exam more or less same format, same questions, or is it varied? So what you find is that um, the lecturer for FIFO 802 tries to um, uh, to be as unpredictable uh, as he possibly could. Because if you look at um, the Gen Feb 2024 paper, let me just quickly try to uh, download it now. If you look at the Genfeb 2024 paper, you will see that um, this question, it's a very common question when it comes to FIN 4802. We have seen it quite a lot in uh, past assignments and past question papers. So question number one is a very common question. And not exactly the same question as is, but you know, they try to change figures here and there as well. But it's a very, the format of this particular question is a very common format of uh, the questions that you find in the previous assignments and previous past papers as well. And this particular question in which is question number two, it's also a very common question that we've seen quite a bit in the past assignments and past uh, um, exams as well. So question number two, A, uh, 2.1, and 2.2, .2. remember when we talked about study unit 15, where we look at um, uh, it, uh, um, country risk. So this this is also another common question that we've seen quite a bit when it comes to past papers as well. Then uh, question number three, it's um, uh, every now and again, they bring this particular question in the, uh, in the exams and past assignments as well. So I've seen this question every now and again in the past exams and also past assignments, where they ask you to look at the uh, any five most important modes of entering into international business market that could be used to pay the South African market as well. And it's not exactly the same, but the concept, it's not exactly the same question, but the concept covered in this particular question, sometimes they just bring it differently, but the concept covered there, it's a, a very common concept that they've brought in in so many times in what previous uh, previous papers as well. Then you look at when you look at question three point two. This course question, they they I don't think they've ever repeated this question exactly as is. But what it, what we know is that uh it's part of a concept that was also uh, covered. I think it's inside unit one. Uh, I think it's in one of the two first study units as well. This is where you look at um, uh, trade financing options as well. It's a very one of those common concepts, one of those concepts, one of the first concepts that they that is discussed in the textbook as well. So it's the previously they've never really brought it exactly as is, but the concept has been asked uh, asked before as well. Then when you look at uh, this question, uh, this question was. One brought in one of the past exam papers once before. I think it was in the past paper. Yeah, it was brought in in one of the past papers. Uh, one of the past papers, one of the previous past papers. But uh, it was only brought once, and they bring it once again as well. Yeah. So that's basically how it is. So you see that some exam, some exams they totally bring new things. Like I remember. When you look at the 20, is it 20, Gen 2023 or Gen 2022, they brought in a totally new question. So they try as much as possible to be random, but they always have a mixture of 
uh, questions that we asked in the previous assignments or previous papers here and there, they just bring it. Maybe maybe a question that was asked in 2017 or 2018 or 2019, somewhere there, every now and again, they also bring those questions or relatively new questions as well. It's always four questions. Sorry? Is it always four questions? Uh, sometimes it can be five, between four and five questions. But remember, it, it will now depend on exactly, because sometimes it, can, it, it would be four questions in, in this case where they brought in uh, this particular type, uh, case study type of question as well. Because remember that case study type of question was carrying um, about 35 marks. So you see that, uh, but if they don't have those long case study type of questions, it can also be about five questions as well with different part marks allocated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how long is the exam? Uh, the exam is... Is it three now? Three hours. Three hours, okay. Yes. So you will see that the issue that many students have when it comes to this exam is the issue of finishing, being able to finish the exam, especially where there is uh, uh, this type of uh, case study type of questions as well. But when it comes to preparation for the exam, uh, don't worry much about it. We'll concentrate and look at how you can approach the exam uh, during the November revision period as well. Okay, cool. Are there any other questions? Um, on the site, I saw the textbook, the highlighted textbook. Um, mm -hmm. Do you also have the other edition? What is it? Three chapters uh, highlighted somewhere as well. The additional readings? Yeah. They should be there on the website, but uh, I, they, they should be there. I will, when I show you how to maneuver the website, I should, uh, I should be able to show you how to uh, get that material as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions before we move on to the website? All right, so when it comes to the our timetable or our schedule, for FIN 4802, uh, you will see that uh, for our schedule, the next class that we're going to be having is go we're going to be looking at assignment one, and it's going to be on the 21st of April and it's from eight to 11. So that's when we're going to be looking at assignment one. Uh, I'm still to look to check to see exactly how, what questions are there and how to approach those questions as well. Sometimes they give open-ended questions, but we always have, if it's an open-ended question, we always have a way where I guide you on how to prepare, the uh, how to answer or how to, or how to approach the questions. Then what I'll do now is that individually you send me uh, your drafts so that I can review uh, those drafts before you, you submit your assignment as well. So you will see that sometimes every now some some of the times, especially when it comes to the credit process, the lecturer loves to ask that question as well because it can be it can be an open ended question because uh it can um it, it is um we can just say choose a company of a choice which means that it can end up being what an open ended question as well. So because of that. If the, it comes that way, it basically means that you we can be able to, uh, you need to just draft, send it back to me. But remember, it will be one of the uh, questions that will be bringing, not just the whole assignment is going to be an open and staff of assignment. They've never brought it like that. If it's if there's a question which is open-ended, what they can do is that they'll give you questions which are generic to everyone, then, one question which can be open ended, but we'll approach it when we look at the assignment as well. So please take note of the timetable. It's already uploaded on the website. So please take note that um, our first, we're going to be having a class for our first assignment, which is going to be on the 21st of April. Then um, on the 3rd of August, we're going to be having a class from 8 to 12. Now, when we have this particular class, please note that um, I'm, I'm going to give you practice questions. So I'm going to give you practice questions so that as you go through uh, this, remember, for the class for the 8th of August, we need to, to have, you need to have covered study unit one, 
to 8. So for 30 minutes, 1 to 8, I'm going to give you uh, practice questions, which you need to make sure that you also attempt before you attend the class. So that when you attend, when you come through the class, the first uh, hour, I will open it up to say, if there's anything that you found difficult when we were going through the study, the, the textbook, please let me know. But remember, you don't have to wait for the class on the 3rd of August to tell me if you are struggling with something. Anytime during the course of the week, as you are going through the study units as well, if there's something that you're struggling with, let me know. Send me a message or give me a call. I'm always going to be available. If I'm not able to answer, send me a message. Then when I make time, I'll always make sure that I, I respond to you. If I need to give you a call to explain the concept in detail, I will I'll give you a call as well. So please make sure that if you encounter anything before the 3rd of August that you're struggling with, let me know so that I'm able to assist you as well. Which means, please note that for the first state, eight study units, I, I would have, um, we, we're going to make sure that um, we go the first hour, we, uh, we open it up to any questions. Then after that, we're going to be looking at, remember the practice questions that I would have given you as homework, we're going to go through them together because those type of um, practice questions, they are basically more geared towards the, these are the typical questions that you're going to be finding in the exam as well. So these type of questions, I pick them up from past papers and past assignments because usually sometimes the question lecturer uh, asks, the way that they ask questions in the exams they are usually based on the type of questions that they ask in assignments and past assignments on past papers as well. So that's those are the type of questions that are going to be looking at uh, for the class on the 12th, uh, 8th, um, 3rd of August. And then on the 17th of August, we're going to be having uh, uh, the assignment two class uh, that is going to be from 8 to 11. Then on the 13th of October, we should be, that's when we should be done because remember we said from... Um, uh, between now and to end of October, we should be done with the curriculum. So our target is that by the time we get to the end of October, we should be done with the curriculum. And I'll do the same when it comes to reviewing those study units as well, where if they were well, going to open up, open it up for the first hour, then after that, we do practice questions which are relevant for those particular study units as well. Then after uh, we are done with that... Mm -hmm. So if we are only done with uh, study unit eight by the third of August, we are late. If 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 the idea is that by the 17th of August, we, if the assi second assignment covers the rest of the curriculum, um, to be only at st study unit eight by that, by the previous week won't help us much, right? Yeah, you see, the issue that we always have every year with the assignments is that the time that the lecturer makes the assignment uh, to you, it's not realistic to expect that everyone will have finished the curriculum by then. Okay. Yeah, it's not realistic. Because even if you look at um, other modules as well, you find that by the time that the, the if you look at, for example, if you look at INV 4H01, you will see that assignment two, it's due um, beginning of August. And it's not realistic to expect that everyone else would, have been, would be done with their curriculum by the time we get to August, considering that UNISA only uh, finished reg registration at the end of March. So we don't usually work with the schedule for, for assignments to say, by the time the assignment two is due, we should be done because it's not realistic. Those schedules are not realistic for us. Okay. Yeah. Then during the revision period, we are going to give you the date for which we're going to be uh, covering this. But by the time you get to October, those dates will be available. So we're going to be uh, looking at the January 2024, moving on to the May, June 2024, then we review assignment one, because remember, by the time we are done with these papers, the assumption is that we should be having available the, the lecturer's memos as well. Then we're going to be using the lecturer's memos to review assignment one and assignment two. Then once we're done with that, that's when we're going to be having discussion classes now, where in those discussion classes, we're going to say, 
for this particular class uh, is there anything that you found difficult sometimes you can send those questions beforehand sometimes you're going, we, you can what uh you can um uh, during the class you can also say this is the topic that i'm still struggling with then we use those discussion classes now to actually polish up on anything that is going to be uh that you're going to be having issues as, with as well uh are there any questions all right now on how to access the material and also how to access the textbook as well you will see that um on the website if you're on the website all you just need to do is go on to student login if you don't have a user account as yet, that's when you can now go out to register, where you indicate the email address that you want to be able to use, the username that you want to use, and also confirm your password as well, and then you log in. Then uh, if you already have a user account, that's when you can now go on to what? Uh, just straight to log in as well, so that you're able to log in as well. Then, so which means in this case, to log in, you are now going to be having, you need to either put your, user, your email or username, and you also need to put your password as well. So which means in this case, once you do that, then once you do that, you see that it takes you to your user account. So once you do that, you see that it takes you to your user account where the list of all the modules that you're doing is, is, going, to, is going to be indicated as well. So you to take you to the dashboard for your user account where the list of everything that you're going to be, all the courses that you're doing there are going to be listed. Then you indicate the course that you want to be able to access. So you click on the course that you want to be able to access. And the first page that you see there it just gives you an overview of exactly what you're looking at. Then from there, you go on to, uh, when you click on curriculum, that's when it will now show you the videos starting from chapter one, which means when you look at the video starting from chapter one, you will see, the, uh, start, so it's basic start unit one. So you see that the video is coming from start unit one, which is wrong module. Okay. okay, so you see that there's an overview of the different study units. So you have the overview of the different study units. Then from the overview of the different study units as well, that's where you look at the uh, videos of the different study units as well. So you see that the videos of study unit one to study unit 19, they are going to be available. So you see, which means that the videos, you are going to be able to access the videos from study unit one to study unit 19. So which means in this case, for example, if you go on study unit one, you have, if the moment you click on the video, it basically means that you're going to be able to start watching the video of study unit one as well. Then from there, after study unit 19, that's when you're going to be able to have a tab which gives you access to the textbook as well. So if you click on this particular tab, you will see that it will take you to the link on, onto the Google Drive. And the, on the link on the, onto the Google Drive, that's where you're going to be able to access the uh, the uh, the uh, the textbook. Uh, in this case, for Finfo 802, it will be uh, this particular textbook as well. I think, remember, there are those three... Um, Those three additional readings, I think I might as well add them up here so that it's easy for students to, because I had put them somewhere else, but let me just add them here so that it's easy for students to be able to access it. Uh, what is the additional readings? All right, so which means uh, when you under the textbook, 
This is where you're also going to be able to access the additional readings, additional reading one, two, and three as well, as well as the textbook, the soft copy of the textbook for international finance as well. Please take note that when it comes to the soft copy of the textbook for international finance, we don't have the latest copy of the latest textbook. So you will see that some of the uh, chapters in the new textbook, the sequencing of the chapters in the new textbook is not the same as the sequencing of the chapters in the old textbook. So please take note of that. So um, the sequencing is not going to be the same. That's how I say, make sure that when you go through these chapters, check to see, to say, start unit, uh, unit 10, what am I supposed to, which uh, chapter is being covered, uh, which, which topic is, be is being covered, and then based on the topic that is being covered, you're going to now look at it for, look for that particular topic in the textbook as well, but it's not that far off from each other. So which means that uh, for Fin4H, Zero two, you will be able to access those three additional readings as well as the soft copy of the textbook as well. Are we together? Okay. Uh, if you want, uh, Renos, I found the copy of the new textbook somewhere online. I can load it onto the WhatsApp and then... Uh, uh, just load it on so that I can quickly highlight it and then send it. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, I need to highlight it to update it post from the old textbook. Then I'll just share it as well on the uh, okay. on the Google Drive. Okay. Then when you go back, you see that, remember we said that we, after study 19, that's where you're going to be able to access the textbook. After that, when you go through revision, when you click on this particular tab, it will give you a link to the Google Drive where you are going to be able to access the past question papers, past assignments, and also past uh, the, the question papers, the past assignment questions, as well as the answers to the past question papers, as well as the answers to the past assignments as well. You will be able to access that during the revision period. Then you'll see that here for the video, after this, it's just going to be videos going through the revision material. So you will see that um, after the additional, uh, the revision material there, you will see that this is now going to be videos going through the different material, uh, revision material from, one, from 2017 all the way to 2023. So you'll see that here we have um, assignment one and two for 2017. And then we also have the um, uh, um, Jan, Feb and May, June 2018, um, assignments as well as the question papers as well. Then we have also have the assignments 2019 as well as the question papers. And then we have the 2020 assignments as well as the question papers. 2021 assignments as well as the question papers. 2022 the same assignments as well as the question papers. And then 2023 assignments as well as the question papers. Then there's also videos where we we'll go through discussion classes as well. So that's basically how you're able to access the videos and the materials on the website. Are there any questions? Uh, Please not. In terms of uh, uh -huh. study style. Me, I'm a very lazy reader when it comes to reading textbooks. Can I just focus on the highlights? The, there's a reason why we highlight this material in the textbook. It's mainly because we are basically streamlining, getting rid of the or unnecessary information so that you focus on the necessary information that you need. Okay, so my so advice would be, yeah. Uh, my advice would be, I think you would find it easier if you say, for example, you want to go through start unit one, go through the video as you go through the textbook. Because remember, what I do is that when I go through the textbook, I'm actually, uh, when I, the videos that are there, I'm actually going through the textbook with you. So my advice would be go through the textbook as uh, go through the textbook as you go through the video because I'll be guiding you to say uh, go on this particular page. This one is being discussed. Then I explain it in detail as well, and then we look at um, then we we'll go on to the next one and we we'll look at the examples in the textbook as well. I usually make uh, my own notes, right? Um, yeah. So I was yeah. You can you you can make you can make your own notes because remember you will find that um. 
it's going to be very easy for you to go through the textbook. Reason being, normally one chapter on average, we, we do one chapter um, per class. So you see that one chapter, you're going to be able to go through one chapter in just three hours. Because remember, you're just going through the videos, maybe three, four hours or so, but it's going to not, it's, you're, you're not going to be taking too long to actually go through the chapter and it's going to be easier for you to understand than going through it yourself first as well. So that's why we have these videos available because they make your life easier when it comes to going through the textbook. But sometimes when I was a student, I used to find it very difficult where I get so stuck up on a particular concept that I spent the whole day struggling to see, understand exactly what is happening with the concept. Because back then we didn't have that access to these videos, which makes life a bit easier as well. Okay. Yeah. So my advice is go through these videos as much, utilize these videos as much as possible. Where you feel that there's something in the video that has been explained and you don't understand, send me a WhatsApp. I'll always make sure that if, if I don't even respond immediately, give me by the end of the day to respond. Give me by the end of the day, I would have responded as well. So please note that, uh, remember, our we are going to be having a class on the, uh, I think it's on the 21st of, uh, of, of this month, so that we're going to be, so that we're able to go through uh, the, assign, the, the, the assignment. So please take note that um, we're going to be having a class on the 21st. I think it's going to be on a Saturday. And from 8 to 11, we are going to be looking at the assignment. Are there any questions? How is the marking stuff? Are they on top of the key? It's I've never really had issues with pin four eight zero two. Okay. Pin four eight zero two is not. Remember last year when we were doing uh, when we were having INV, there was a bit of here and there, but I've never really had issues with uh, FIN 4802. Not, not really, never. Okay. I don't remember having issues with FIN 4802. No, no. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's end here today. Please note that during the course, when you're going through these videos, if there's anything you find difficult, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be able to assist you in every way possible to make sure that you, your query is answered as well. But please make sure that at least you go to the video first, highlight things that you're finding difficult, then you let me know exactly where you are finding difficulties when it comes to covering this uh, this material, then I'll be able to explain in detail as well. Okay, thanks, sir. All right. All right, if there are no questions, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Remember, we have a class on the 21st where we are going to be going through the first assignment. So please make sure that you diarize that as well. All right, enjoy your weekend. Cheers.